One of the wonderful things about mathematics is how it seems to be precisely the right language to describe and understand the world around us. In this series, we'll just see a few instances of how that works, because there's always a math for that. The paradox of the false positive is a little like a murder mystery. It means that something strange has happened, and we'd like to understand precisely what's going on. And the strangeness is all about medical testing. Let's suppose you go to the doctor and have a test for a disease, and the test comes up positive. Does that really mean that you must have the disease, or is there a chance that you don't? The answer is surprising. Let's take a deeper look. I'm going to use the example of celiac disease, for which there are three different serological tests. The anti-endomesial antibody test, the anti-reticulin antibody test, and the anti-gliadin antibody test. Of these three tests, one is considered more reliable than the others, and that's the first. Unreliable is very reliable. There are two important figures here. First of all, the specificity of the test. The specificity of a test tells you what percentage of the time the test correctly tells you if you're healthy. And in the case of the EMA test, that percentage is 98. So almost all the time, it correctly identifies healthy people as healthy. A second important figure is the sensitivity of a test. And this tells you what percentage of the time a test correctly identifies those who do have a disease. And here, it's again very high, 97%. So it looks like the test is incredibly reliable. There's one more piece of information we need to be able to work with these figures, and that's to know how common celiac disease is. Well, we can only estimate this figure, but the estimate is that 1% of the American population has celiac disease. And now we're ready to go. Let's start by looking at the whole population. It divides into the healthy group and the group who have celiac disease. 99% are healthy, 1% have the disease. Let's then think about what happens when these people go and take the tests. There are two possible results. They test positive for the disease, or they test negative for the disease. In other words, they're healthy. Most of the time when they're healthy, they test negative for the disease. And if you remember, that's the 98% figure, the specificity of this test. Just 2% of the time, the test comes up positive, even though they don't have the disease. And this is what we describe as a false positive. They don't really have the disease, but the test suggests that they do. Let's now take a look at the people who do have the disease, the celiacs. Again, the test can come up as positive or as negative. And in this situation, the test correctly identifies the diseased individuals 97% of the time. The sensitivity of the test. And just 3% of the time, it says that those individuals don't have the disease, even though they do. And because that's an incorrect conclusion, we would call it a false negative. Let's now suppose we test 10,000 randomly selected people from the American population. Well, 99% of those people we would predict would be healthy. 99% of 10,000 is 9,900. And the remaining 100 would have the celiac disease. Let's start with the healthy people. 98% of them would come up with a negative test result. 98% of 9,900 is 9,702. 2% 9 of 9,900 is 198. So there's 198 false positives, we predict. What about the 100 celiacs? Well, 97% of them would come up positive. Well, that's just 97. And 3% of them would come up as false negatives. And that's just three. So let's go back to the original question. Test result is positive. Do you have the disease? We're looking for the probability that you have the disease given that the test result is positive. Approximately 300 people have tested positive. The 198 here and the 97 here. So roughly 300. Of those 300, only around 100 actually have the disease. So our probability is 100 out of 300, or a third. So you've taken the test, the test result is positive, but the chance that you have the disease is only a third. So the test looks accurate when we first look at the figures, 97%, 98%, these are high figures. But in reality, if you take the test and it comes up positive, the chance of having the disease is only a third. Why is this? 
it's because so many people don't have the disease and so however small the chances of making a mistake that means there's a lot of people involved in the mistaken figure. What's the conclusion? Always get a second opinion.